What's up guys? So we have just gotten back from the Bagger Racing League Sonoma round uh, in December. Kind of wanted to just walk you through and, and give you a rundown of how our weekend went, how our race went. Kind of going into the weekend, you know, before the race, there, there wasn't a whole lot that I really wanted to do to the bike. There was a few changes from Salt Lake that I wanted to make. It may, uh, you know, mainly getting more ground clearance because one of the things that was slowing me down in Salt Lake was I was, you know, I was scraping, you know, the primary on the one side and the exhaust on the other. So I was limited on my, on my swing arm. I couldn't go any taller on the rear shocks because my swing arm, the bottom of my swing arm would hit the top of the oil pan underneath it. So uh, one of the modifications I wanted to do after Salt Lake was to raise that up. So I had to pull the swing arm out, machine away some material on the bottom side of the swing arm and so that it would let the swing arm, you know, swing down lower. And then uh, what I did to actually grow my, my rear shock was rather than changing shocks, cause I was super happy with the, the legends uh, that I had on the rear, I didn't want to change them and they were 14 inch shocks. Um, what I did is I machined a, like a two inch block uh, that actually mounted to the top of my swing arm and basically just raised my uh, rear shock mount and gave me an extra two inches. So I was an overall 16 inch uh, in the rear. Um, I knew when I first built the bike that I was going to eventually try and make that modification so when i had the front forks built originally i had them built <clears throat> to a plus five over stock um, so in salt lake i had the front forks kind of sucked up um, in the triple tree by two inches knowing that eventually i was going to go two inches taller in the rear and then when i did that i could just basically slide the forks down uh, in the triple tree to kind of keep my geometry where I had set it up and where I wanted it. So I got all that done. I got, you know, the machine, uh, the swing arm machined out underneath, got it to swing down. Um, it actually probably where I machined it probably would swing three inches more than what it was. Uh, but then I just ended up making that two inch block, got that all situated, just made a few minor adjustments to the bike. I, uh, I changed one of the fairing mounts, made a new one of those. Um, which ended up helping later on in the weekend, but uh, I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Uh, so the bike was, you know, pretty solid from Salt Lake, made a few changes. And so we headed to Sonoma and the race, you know, we were really excited, had high expectations off of the fourth place we had in Salt Lake. Going into the weekend, I, I think I was a little bit more nervous for Sonoma than I was for Salt Lake. Going into Salt Lake, there was no expectation. It was my first ever bagger race and I mean I could have went out and, and got last place and everybody would have been well it's your first race good job you went out there and did it and you killed it but then I you know I go out in Salt Lake and I run well and I'm competitive and I, I place fourth so now that kind of sets a bar for Sonoma so going into Sonoma there was a, a higher expectation it's just a, an expectation that I had put on myself but I think that you know anything less than a fourth place in Sonoma I felt like, you know, would have been, you know, a setback from where we were. So I think I was a little more nervous going into Sonoma, but you know, that's racing and that's why we do it. The nervousness and just, you know, is all part of racing for me. I mean, it's why I do it. it it's the excitement, the nervousness, and then the reward of the, you know, when you go out and you perform well, it's just that much more meaningful. So yeah, we get loaded up, we head out. You know, we made it to the track in one piece. We got there late Thursday night. We got the bike unloaded and kind of got everything pushed into the garage. So we got the bike and all my gear and everything teched and, and kind of got set up for the night and, and ready for, for Friday morning. The original schedule of the weekend was open practice all day Friday. And then Saturday would have been uh, practice in the morning and then time qualifying rounds in the afternoon and then Sunday would have been uh, a short practice in the morning and then the race in the afternoon but the uh, the weather didn't cooperate uh, BRL had made the decision Thursday or maybe Wednesday ish that week to condense the schedule 
and, and basically cancel everything on Sunday and push everything into Saturday. Uh, Friday mornings all open practice. The first session was pretty early Friday morning and it was still really cold. So I skipped first session, try and get the bike just 100% ready and then got ready for second session. I go out in the second session, my first lap out, I'd make one lap, I make the hairpin turn, turn 11 to come onto the front straight. And what felt like I hit neutral with a whole bunch of grinding. I had basically grenaded my transmission on the first lap of first, first practice on Friday morning. Um, it really sucked because I literally, like the pit out, like pit or, or track exit, there's one place to, to exit the track and the transmission let go like 20 feet past that. So I literally had to make a whole, you know, two mile loop around the track, listening to this transmission grinding itself to death and just being super deflated and, and thinking like, shit, we're, we're going home now. We're packing it up and going home. We just got here. I made one lap and, and we're done. Pulled into the pits. The guys are like, what's up? Like, we heard something happen, but not really sure. And I told them, I'm like, I think the transmission's done. I think we're toast. You know, I think we're going home. You know, so at that point we were all kind of, I don't know, kind of bummed out and kind of pissed off maybe, or, you know, let down that we literally drove all that way, did all that prep and got one lap of practice. But, uh, you know, the guys that we all kind of gathered around started talking like, you know, let's not give up. Let's not just pack it up yet. Let's see what we can do to save the weekend. And so Jake and, and Bridger jumped into the bike. They're like, well, either way, we got to tear the bike apart. So let us just start tearing the bike apart right now. Let's find out exactly what it is that went south. And I said, you know, I'll go on the hunt for a transmission. I kind of walked around and asked, uh, you know, a few of the other racers and the other teams. It's, that's a hard thing to ask because I know like, the guys that come prepared with spare parts, like they don't want to just give up spare parts because there's a pretty good chance that they may need it as well. So it's kind of a, it's a sticky thing to ask, you know, but I just figured I had to ask, I had to try. Found someone who had a spare transmission, just a stock transmission that was willing to let it go. And so we come up with a transmission. Um, J.O. starts hunting for some of the specialty tools that we didn't have that we were going to need to to do a full transmission swap. By this time, Jake and Bridger have got most of the, you know, the transmission almost pulled out and we just start hammering down. First session out, second lap, uh, crapped out third gear. Uh, really kind of sucks. Uh, we've been scrambling, we're ripping the transmission out right now. We just found a, a buddy has a spare stalker. Uh, we're gonna try and do a transmission swap here. See if we can get back on the track for today. Um, it'll be cutting it close today, but trying for sure to get on track tomorrow. Try and save our weekend, but uh, I'm gonna get back to work. We got a lot of work to do here. You know, between the four of us, we, we had that transmission pulled out, cleaned out, put back together by the lunch break. Um, and after lunch, I still had four practice sessions to go, so. You know, we just went from like feeling totally deflated and, and let down that, the, that we were done. We just kind of rallied together. We made this happen. We rebuilt the transmission by lunchtime. And so we're feeling pretty high. And so I gear up and I get ready to go out for these last four practice sessions on Friday. So I go out and I start filling out the track. At this point, I'm just still trying to learn the track. I, you know, I literally had one lap at this point. So just trying to fill out the track, learn the track, get some, some good markers, remember, you know, memorize the, you know, breaking points, where I need to be, where to get set up for this, this corner and that corner. And, uh, you know, I think I, I started to ride really well. And I think by the end of the, the end of the day, Friday, I had some pretty respectable lap times under my belt and felt really good about how I was riding and how I was managing the track and 
and how the bike was feeling. You know, we made some changes to the bike and the suspension department and kind of smoothed a few things out because the Sonoma track is, it's, it's a lot different than what Salt Lake was. That the Sonoma track is a lot more technical. There's a lot more tight turns of way, you know, less straightaway and a lot more corners. And then the track surface is really rough. I mean, there's a lot of bumps. There's a lot of like, one asphalt to another asphalt transition. And I had kind of studied the track the couple weeks before. So I knew some of this stuff going on and I knew that like suspension setup was gonna be one of the most important things. It was good, that session was, uh, we went the other way, wrong way on suspension adjustments. So we're gonna go back to where we were for that third session because that's where it felt the best. So we're gonna go back to that. We got, uh, I think we have one more session, so I'd like to go back and finish. So I feel good about tomorrow morning. One of the things, you know, between all these practice sessions was making some suspension adjustment changes and then did it get better or did it get worse? And, and I think by the end of the day, we, we had a pretty good idea of where we needed to be. We, you know, we started working in one direction and then we went a little too far and then we backed up a little bit and kind of found that sweet spot where the bike seemed to be handling uh, really well. So, you know, Friday night, we're pretty stoked. I got some good lap times. We never gave up and, you know, I'm super stoked and, and super proud of the team for kind of rallying and not giving up. And I think that's something that's important. You know, you fight till the end and, and never give up. And, and I'll, I'll give credit to the team. You know, I, I came off the track pretty, pretty deflated and, and they were the ones that were like, let's not give up. Let's see if we can find a spare. Let's, let's, let's see if we can rebuild this thing and, and get out there. So, you know, they, they really helped in keeping me, you know, keeping my head up and keeping my spirits up and, and keeping me on the right track. I mean, I think without them, I could have easily just, you know, given up and, and, and packed up and went home. So credit to my guys for, you know, not giving up and, and keeping us going. Saturday rolls around and, and Saturday is a condensed schedule of Saturday and Sunday. A short practice session really early in the morning. Pro Stock Bagger is group number one and we were first group out in practice and then there was a only one qualifying session. So basically what we learned on Friday is basically what we had because because the Saturday morning practice session wasn't really, you know, we weren't able to use it to really lay down any lap times because of how cold it was. When I went out Saturday morning, it was more just like go out and just kind of try and remember those those breaking points and those spots in the track and, and setup areas. I wasn't really pushing it on, you know, nobody could because it was, you know, probably in the high 30s, maybe 40 degrees out at that time. It was really cold out. So you definitely didn't want to go laying into a corner on cold tires. Rather than two qualifying sessions, we got one long session, one 30 minute qualifying session. So going into qualifying, I know that I couldn't go out and lay down lap after lap for 30 minutes straight. I just, you know, currently am not in that good of shape. So I knew that beforehand. So my, my kind of attack to a 30 minute qualifying session was I'm gonna go out and lay down four or five laps and then I was gonna pull into pit lane. I had the guys, you know, bring me a bottle of water down to pit lane. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go out, make four or five laps. I'm gonna pull in, I'm gonna get a drink of water. I'm gonna let my arms, arms relax, you know, kind of catch my breath, take a break for about five minutes and then go back out and do another four or five laps and try and lay down another heater, you know, set a, a good lap there. So went out for that kind of first part of that run and uh, was actually sitting second in qualifying um, as I came off the track into pit lane. Um, so, you know, was feeling good there, uh, you know, sitting second behind a, a, a really fast Benny Carlson. So was feeling really good, got a drink of water, got ready to go back out and, and 
make another few laps. Go out there, get on track. The, my first lap back out, there's a yellow flag, so I kind of have to let up and check up, and, and that lap doesn't count because, you know, it's not going to be fast. Try and make another heater. Got almost all the way back around, and there was a pretty gnarly lay down on the back stretch going into turn 11. Then they, they red flagged our session. So I didn't get to make any more laps after I had taken that break. And, and in the meantime, a couple guys had bumped and, and ran a, you know, split second lap faster than me because so it bumped me down to fourth in qualifying. I do honestly feel like I could have won out and, and ran a little bit quicker lap time and, and kept that second qualifying spot, but I just didn't get the opportunity to. So fourth is where we ended up qualifying. So sitting fourth on the grid for the race, but I come off the track after qualifying and even just knowing that my lap times are there with, with some of the fast guys, you know, there was a, there was a group of like five of us, uh, myself, uh, Steve Chamberlain, Arnie Wells, uh, Logan, Wheelie Pig, and uh, Oleg. We were all like really close in lap times uh, all day, you know, Friday and, and Saturday. So I knew it was going to be a, a, a five way battle between the five of us, really for second place, just because Benny was, you know, kind of miles ahead of the rest of us but felt like I was really competitive in that group. So yeah, I'd come around, get lined up for the race, um, sitting in uh, P4 on the grid. So feeling good about the day. The race starts. Um, I get a pretty decent start. Uh, we had a kind of a mock start in our warm-up lap and the, and the bike popped up, it wheelied up pretty good and I really had to let out of it and a bunch of guys flew by me in the fake start for the warm-up lap. Um, so I had that weighing on my mind sitting on the start line for the actual race and kind of just tried to take it a little bit easier off the line. Um, and, and I got a decent start, not the best start, but, you know, kind of hung with the pack. And, you know, we were kind of bunched up going up the hill into turn two. Kind of still bunched up. We started to kind of get sorted out by like turn three. Um, turn four is kind of gnarly, kind of downhill, uh, sharp 90. And then, you know, turn five is a big, kind of long sweeping right hander, kind of going back up the hill, setting us up for turn six, which is the carousel. And then, uh, as some of you probably have already seen all the videos and photos. Turn six comes and I end up out in the weeds and end up on the side and, and crash out uh, in turn six on lap number one of the race and that was the end of my day. Was really kind of mad at myself. Um, I think kind of going into turn four, if I remember right, I was in, I think fourth position, maybe fifth. And, you know, kind of was right in the middle of that, that that group of five guys that I had mentioned and just wanted to kind of hang, you know, make sure I was right there with them. As I come around turn five, turn five is a right-hander and then you set up for turn six, which is that big sweeping left-hander going down the hill. And when I came out of turn five, it was full throttle up over the hill. I was kind of set up already to the right. Um, getting set up for turn six was one that, you know, I had kind of struggled with because there was a there were some really big bumps in turn six and and they got worse the more inside all the way to the left you were so um, on Friday I'd kind of found a really good line where you enter in the in the center of the corner and then as you get closer to the bottom you ease into the to the inside and I felt like I really liked that line and it was fast for me so in the race, I kind of come set up and, I, and I'm, actually, I, I'm actually to the right of the center, so I'm kind of more outside for six. And as I come over the hill, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit too far outside and I'm actually coming in a little bit too hot. You know, I stayed on the throttle coming up over the hill a little bit too long, just trying to stay aggressive on lap one. And so I'm getting on the brakes really hard and I'm on the front brake super hard and I just, you know, I barely tapped the rear brake and the rear wheel locked up for half a second. Um, 
You know, looking back, it, I never had the rear brake lock up at all in Salt Lake. I think it probably was a little bit due to cold tires and cold track is why it locked up, but it, it, either way, it locked up a little bit. And like I said, I was coming in a little bit hot. I was a little bit too far outside. And then when that rear wheel locked up, it really kind of just threw me offline. And at that point, I knew I was going into the grass. So like at the last minute, I stood the bike back up to try and go into the grass staying, you know, staying on two wheels because I knew I couldn't go into it on a lean. So I tried to, you know, straighten up. Knew I was going to hit the grass, but just tried to save it. But then as soon as I hit the grass, that grass was like ice. Um, it probably was still kind of wet from the night before. And, you know, like I said, it was just ice. As soon as I hit that grass, the bike went out from underneath me. I tried to pick the bike up. It was kind of pointed downhill in a weird spot. I couldn't pick it up by myself. And they threw the red flag and they had to send the uh, emergency trucks out to pick the bike up. And, the bike was not really that bad. I probably could have rode it. The shift peg was a little bit bent. It was probably rideable. I didn't have a saddlebag, it blew off, but it was kind of a, a disappointment because I really felt like I could have been a contender for a, for a podium spot. And I really wanted to go out and battle with that, that group of, you know, those four other guys. I think that I could have really been there and, and you know, battled with those guys. So it was a big disappointment for myself. I felt really bad for letting the team down, especially after they kind of rallied and got me back on track the day before with the transmission issue. But that's, that's racing. Um, you know, the ups and the downs. We, we went into the weekend thinking that we were really prepared for the weekend. And then we get punched in the face with a blown transmission and we realize we're not as prepared as we thought we were. We didn't have spare parts. We didn't have all the tools we needed. You know, we just have to try and, you know, take away from the weekend what we can, learn what we can, um, both, you know, being prepared on the bike side and then me personally as, as the rider being better. I was really, you know, I, I still am really kind of just mad at myself. I feel like it was a mental error that caused me to go down. It wasn't a bike malfunction. It wasn't anybody else. Nobody hit me. Nobody ran me off the road. It was all just a mental error. I, I missed my marker. I missed my spot. Um, I got out of line and, and, and ended the day early. It was all on me. So, um, I'm ready to go back to Sonoma and kind of conquer that corner because I feel like it got the best of me. So I, I hope that we go back to Sonoma so I can redeem myself. But, uh, you know, we're just gonna put our heads down. I got some more changes I wanna make to the bike this, this winter and get ready for the 2022 season. And, uh, you know, I've kind of set the expectation on myself. I mean, I really wanna go out and I wanna contend for that that red number one plate at the end of the year in the Pro Stock Bowyer class, I want to go for that, that number one plate. I think I have a motorcycle that's capable. I think my riding ability currently I'm capable and I think that I have a lot of room to improve in my riding skills and my fitness and my preparation. Um, if I can do a better job getting myself ready, I think that I have a really good chance of going out there and being a contender. So. We're gonna put our heads down and get to work here and get ready for 2022. And uh, just wanna thank you guys for all of your support in the 2021 efforts. And uh, you know, I think overall looking back on the 2021 season for us, even though we ended on kind of a low note, I think our Bagger Racing League experience for 2021 has been huge. Um, I think the bike has been great. I think um, my, my results in Salt Lake are really something to build off of. And looking forward, I think we have a lot of room to improve, but we're in a really good spot. So, so I just wanna thank all of my sponsors that have helped uh, get us to where we are right now. Um, when, you know, when we started building the bike back at the first of the year, um, we had a bunch of companies that really helped, in, helped out, chipped in. Uh, Law Tigers has always been a huge supporter of our racing efforts. So I want to give a, a, a big shout out to those guys for their continued support and look forward to working with them in the future. Uh, Legend Suspension really helped us out in the suspension area. Behringer Brakes have been huge. 
uh, Speed Merchant, Alloy Art, uh, TMS Titanium helped us out with uh, our, our Thai subframe that we built. Raw Tin Garage, again with paint. Um, he's gonna have to repaint, and so gonna need a little bit more support because uh, I've done a number on a saddlebag and a fairing, but, uh, but John at Raw Tin really killed it for us this year. Hoffman Designs, uh, the guys at Galfer Braking, um, you know, I've been a huge supporter and the, you know, the brake rotors on the bike are outstanding. I can't say enough about those guys. Uh, Motul, uh, keeping the bike lubed up, Trask, race, Trask Racing, uh, helping us out. So yeah, I just wanna give a huge shout out to all those companies and brands that have helped us out and got us to where we are. Like I said, thank everybody for all of your support and we will see you guys in 2022.